Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today is all about airbrush. We're going to start at square one, understanding how an airbrush works and all of the pieces and parts that make up an airbrush. Understanding all of these pieces and parts to an airbrush is really going to help you when you have to disassemble your airbrush, because no matter what, if you're airbrushing, there's going to come a time where you need to completely tear down your airbrush to get it clean. So let's go ahead, get over to the table, and see what's inside this thing. So I have two different styles of airbrushes here. I've got the Master Airbrush, which this one is one of those cheap $20 airbrushes that you can get on Amazon. Then I have the Badger 105 Patriot. Now these are very similar airbrushes, but the tips are a little different, and we're going to go over that. I think anybody getting into airbrushing, or anybody that's just been airbrushing for just a little while, should understand the mechanics of the airbrush and understand all of the different pieces and parts. Because there are wearables on this, and eventually you're going to have to replace some parts on these things. So first, let's go over just the general premise of how an airbrush actually sprays. This is a cutaway of an airbrush tip. Now this is a generic representation because there are a lot of different types of airbrushes that the nozzles and tips look different. But at its core, all airbrushes are like this in some form or fashion. So first, is the outer passage, and this is the air passage in red. So this chamber is where the air is actually flowing out of to the tip of the nozzle. Then the inner passage with the needle is the paint passage, or the paint channel. This is where the paint flows out to the tip of the needle to spray out. Now to get into how it actually works. So on the left, you see the representation of a nozzle. And on the right, there is the trigger. Now this is for a double acting airbrush. So when you push down on the trigger, the air valve opens up and pushes air through the air passage, out the tip. Now while you're still holding down, you pull back on the trigger, and that pulls back the needle, which allows paint to flow around the needle and out the tip of the nozzle. And in one form or another, this is how all airbrushes work. When you pull a trigger, the needle is pulled back, which opens up the passage to allow paint to flow through and spray out with the air. So the one thing about airbrushes is there is natural wear and tear on these. A lot of these have brass fittings and brass threads, and every single time you assemble and disassemble, you are adding wear to your airbrush. So the one thing I will say, it's good to have good airbrush practices to where you are not having to completely strip this thing down every single time you get clogs and you need to clean it. Both of these are double acting airbrushes. Another type of airbrush is a single acting airbrush. And that basically means when you push down, it is just going to let paint out. And it is an on and an off. The nice thing with a double acting airbrush is when you pull back, you can control the amount of flow of your actual paint coming out. So when you push back, you're letting out all of the paint it can physically push out. But when you just push down and pull back just a little bit, then that is just releasing a little bit of paint. And you can control the variation of flow by pulling back at certain points. So if you want just a little bit, you pull back just a little bit. If you want a lot of paint to come out, you pull back all the way. So it's just variations. So now let's go to the identification of the different parts of an airbrush. So starting at the back of both of these airbrushes, this part right here is called the handle. Then you have the body and the trigger, and the triggers are for both of them. Down at the bottom is the air valve, and depending on the type of your airbrush, you may have an adapter. So this Master Air does not have an actual adapter. 
this badger does have an adapter. And adapters just screw onto the bottom of your airbrush and this allows you to fit your specific hose. So this is my airbrush hose and it just screws on like that. And then this will screw onto that and it is an adapter so I can get airflow to my airbrush. But the nice thing about this Master Air is it fits the hose perfectly. There are different types of hose sizes and variations so this is all dependent on your specific airbrush. And when it comes to your air valve, these act a lot like just like a tire valve. They have on or off. There's no variation on it. And that is to allow the certain pressure that you have your compressor set to. So if I have it at 20 PSI, I know it's not going to fluctuate. It's going to keep at the same pressure because it is on and open and the air is flowing. The next is the top, which is your paint cup. These are both gravity feed airbrushes. Paint is being drawn down into the channel, which you see at the very bottom, and drawing along the needle all the way to the tip of the nozzle. The next part is the tips. Now the tips can vary a lot depending on the type of airbrush you may have. First, there's the nozzle cap, which is the very first part connecting to the actual body of the airbrush. Then the second part is the needle cap. So this is actually protecting the needle from inside, and this needle cap is actually exposing the needle out of the tip. Now for the inside. Dependent on the type of airbrush you have, if it's enclosed like this, the first thing you need to do is remove the handle. And then that exposes the end of your needle. For this one, the needle is already exposed, showing the needle chuck nut. And this is actually what tightens the needle and holds it in place. So if you unscrew the needle chuck nut, the needle will come out. And the same thing for this one. For the open style, once the needle is out, then you can unscrew the handle. There are different variations of handles. This one has an O-ring seal, this one does not. Then you have the needle chuck guide, and that is what the needle is going through and what you're putting the needle chuck nut onto. Depending on your airbrush, to remove this, all you do is unscrew it. And what you actually are unscrewing is the spring guide, and that is this right here on both of these. The variation between these is in the Badger, everything is concealed with the spring itself. So for this, this has actually got a notch in it to where it only goes one way, so your needle chuck guide cannot rotate. To remove the spring, all you do is unscrew the brass nut, take it off, then you can pull out the needle chucking guide. Then you can remove the spring from the spring guide. Now when you move the master airbrush, all you have to do is take off the spring guide because it does not secure the spring onto the needle chucking guide. Now depending on your airbrush, your auxiliary lever could be attached to your needle chuck guide. And on the master airbrush, this is actually attached already. But on the Patriot, it is not. Now an important thing to understand of what the whole purpose of this spring guide is for is it keeps pressure on your trigger to keep it pushing it forward. That way when you let go, it will immediately push it back forward and turn off the paint. So you definitely want all of your pieces to guide smoothly. If they do not guide smoothly, the one thing that I do is I have white lithium grease and I will put just a tiny amount on any of the moving pieces in the back of the airbrush. That way my pieces glide nicely in the handle. The next part is the trigger itself. And depending on what airbrush you have, you may have a straight trigger that pushes directly down onto the air valve. This one is for my Patriot, but on my master airbrush, there is a pin attached to the end, and this is allowing you to pull back on the airbrush while still keeping a straight down pressure on the air valve. Other airbrushes have this pin as well, but it's not attached. So the next part is your nozzle cap and needle cap. Now depending on the type of airbrush you have, you may be able to just remove this with your fingers and the needle cap and nozzle cap will also disassemble. If you're having a hard time removing your needle cap and nozzle cap, 
do not use regular pliers. You need to be using soft jawed pliers. This allows you to get a good grip and not destroy your airbrush. There are two types of nozzle caps. One that actually releases the air into the needle cap and another one that just releases the air and paint. And the difference is in the actual nozzle itself. This one is from the Patriot airbrush and you can see the hole, those little holes around the larger hole where the needle comes through. And this one is from the Master airbrush which only has a hole for the paint and the air to come through. So for the Badger airbrush, this is a pressure fitted nozzle, which means there is no threading. It just fits in the hole like so, and the pressure of the actual nozzle cap keeps it in place and seats it to have a seal. And here you can see two holes. This is where your nozzle fits in, and the hole underneath it is where your air comes out. So this is your paint channel, this is your air channel. Now looking at the master airbrush, this has a threaded nozzle. And if you see all the way around, this is where the air comes through. So the air and the paint are released within the needle cap. So airbrushes with a threaded nozzle will come with this stamped little wrench. And all you have to do is grab it and twist it. And always remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey because you do not want to over torque your nozzle. Now, depending on the type of nozzle you have, you may have a little O-ring that goes around the actual nozzle where it seats on the airbrush body. Not all airbrushes have this. So now you know all of the pieces and parts of an airbrush. Hopefully this will help you be a little more confident in disassembling your airbrush so you can clean it and give its proper maintenance and care. Not all airbrushes are the same. This is just two examples of two airbrushes that are very similar, but still different. If you're still uncomfortable taking apart your airbrush after this, one thing that you can do is record yourself actually taking it apart. And you can also lay out everything like I have here so you don't forget which piece and part goes together. Another thing you can do is be sure to have a little container that way, for all of these little pieces and parts, you can keep them in there so it doesn't roll off your table and lose them. One thing I typically do when I'm disassembling my airbrush is I will take a towel, lay it out, and set it on there to make it a little harder for the pieces and parts to be able to roll off the table. To reassemble your airbrush, you want to go in the exact opposite order that you went to assemble it. For obvious reasons. Because you can't put the handle on the body without putting your spring guide and needle chucking guide back in. When reassembling, I will always take a little bit of lithium grease and put it in the parts that are moving. These parts that I always touch with just a tiny, tiny bit, but I do not put grease on the needle itself. So I will put it on the needle chucking guide on the outside. I will put it on the auxiliary lever and on the trigger. And I put it on anywhere with threads because that will allow you to disassemble it a lot easier in the future without it seizing and sticking together. An airbrush is a phenomenal tool for painting your projects, but it is a tool and you need to understand the basic mechanics and how it works. That way when you have issues, you can quickly identify what part or piece is actually giving you those issues. So now we've seen how to properly disassemble your airbrush. Now I'm quickly going to reassemble it and show you the process of which I go to put it back together. I'll put the nozzle back on first, then the nozzle cap, then I'll put the needle cap back on, then my adapter, then I'll put the auxiliary lever back in, and the curved part goes to the back. And I'm just going to put that right in this T channel. And then I push it forward to be able to stay in place. Then reassemble the spring, put the cap back on to hold the spring in place. Then I put the needle chucking guide back in the spring guide and you notice how there's a one flat side and I will put it all the way in to match the hole. I always ensure that my spring is working and everything is moving smoothly. Reinstall the spring guide. Once the spring guide is in, I will put my trigger in. Then I test my trigger to make sure it pulls back. Then I'll take my needle chuck nut 
Spin it on, but do not tighten it all the way, because it needs to be loose enough for the needle to go through. Then, put on the handle. Once the handle is installed, I slide in the needle. Gently push it and make sure there's no real friction, because if you force the needle in, you can actually damage the tip of the needle, and then your airbrush will not work properly. Keeping the tip perfectly pointed without any imperfections on it is key to have a properly operating airbrush. Once I have the needle in, I tighten the chucking nut, and the airbrush is ready and start painting. Now when it comes to the master airbrush, all I do differently is I will actually take the nozzle and I will make sure that I get the nozzle on properly and screw on the tip by hand first. You need to make absolute sure that you do not cross thread your nozzle. Then I'll tighten this up, put the nozzle cap back on, then the needle cap. I put the trigger back in and I make sure that this pin falls right back into the hole all the way. Then I slide in the auxiliary lever and needle chucking guide. Put on my spring, put on my spring guide, spin it on. Then put my needle chucking nut on. Same thing, just don't spin it on all the way. Then I'm going to slide my needle through, making sure that there is no friction and it's not going against anything. And the nice thing about these types of needles, you can actually test it out by putting it in backwards to make sure that there is nothing sticking on it. It's all good, so I'm gonna put it through, tighten it, put the handle back on. Then the color cup on this actually has a lid and I can put that back on. And now this is ready to put my air hose on and airbrush with this as well. So one thing to note, I did not add lithium grease to any of the threads because previously to this video, I actually already disassembled this and cleaned them up and already add lithium grease. So the grease is already on all of the areas that I want them on. One other thing to note is if you notice any leaks or bubbles or anything like that around the needle cap or nozzle cap, you can actually take some soft jawed pliers and tighten them. But remember, do not take regular pliers onto your airbrush. Make sure you're using some type of soft jawed pliers. And if you like what you've seen today, and if you wanna support the channel, the best thing you can do is hit that subscribe button and like the video. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.